Obviously, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I run Fast Track FBA. Obviously, I'm sure you probably would because you're probably going to be watching this in my group. Um, but if you don't, obviously, be sure if maybe you're watching this on the replay or you know, on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. I think it's down here. Um, but also as well, give me a thumbs up. I really like that. And if you found this content useful, be sure just to drop a comment down below. That's really useful for me and really helpful. Obviously, it kind of lets me know that you like what I'm doing and obviously I'll do more of it. But also as well, if there is anything else that you want me to should we say record or to do any videos on then obviously what I can do is I can make that content that's going to help your business now what I'll do is I'll just share a little bit about me I've been selling on Amazon for ooh, three years now and I've been doing six figures for the whole three years that I've been doing and basically everything uh, that I'm going to talk about now is some tips and tricks that I've learned I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm an expert and I know everything because I don't but but over my time in Amazon, I've learned quite a few things and I think it's quite useful to share back, whether it be through sourcing or systemization, systemization or optimization of our processes and our systems. And I'm very happy to share that with people and, you know, in the Fast Track FBA group. And, and also as well, I run a sourcing service called Fast Track FBA. And what we do is we have a team and also a lot of software custom built, which allows us to source and to find deals for people to resell on Amazon. So the next point we want to talk about now is when you've got when you're finding these products let's say for example you've sourced 10 20 30 products and you're like great not a problem but now you want to get them all into Amazon and you want to get them to Amazon quick because you know each time you have to click on them it just creates a pain so the next bit what you want to do is to say look so what I've done here and if I just come in and say look we've got this DeLonghi product and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check because I think I've got it in here we go, yeah, this is all in, that's fine. So, and if I just come over to Inventory Loader, so what I've done here is I use FBA Multitool, but there's a lot of software like this. There are other options you can use. And I have FBA Multitool like import here. So I'm just going to quickly check, and I'm going to put in a random store like www.google. Oh, no, I need to do a sale price first. Let's say, for example, I can buy this for £20. And I'm selling it for 90. Obviously, we're going to get a great profit, but right now we're not really worried about what the profit and ROI is because there's this demonstration. We're only showing you how to do the process. We're not worried about finding the deal. But let's say, for example, we found this deal and great, I can buy it for 20 pound. But now I'm going to put in the URL, and obviously this would normally be the actual URL. But today we're just going to call it Google 123 or Test 123. And when I'm ready, I'm going to click Go. And obviously, what this will do is it will now take this product and all the data and it will transfer it over to here. So we can see this has just come in and you can see we've got all the information here. So like buy, sell, etc., etc. Buy for £20, sell for the current market price is £90.99. And if I just double check, I can see here that my link URL is google.com test123. So that product's come in. So now what we want to do is just for the sake of this demonstration, I want to add maybe five or six different products in. So I'm just going to copy this link because it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to load up five or six different products and we like kettles at the moment. So let's load a couple of kettles. And let's say, for example, we've done a really good sourcing. We found loads of deals or maybe my VAs found loads of deals and we're going to put them into our list. So I'm just going to put in £10. I'll put in £10 for all of them. And what we're trying to do now is just create a list on our Excel or our Google Sheet of products that we could buy. And I'm going to put it at £10 again, calculate profit, and buy. And then this one, drop that URL in. And the reason why we're doing this is just to give you a good demonstration of what it might be like in real life. Oh, calculations first. Go. Interesting enough, that one is eligible to sell no. Um, and then this one is, let's say, £5. And then go. And then this one we won't do because it's eligible to sell no. So, right. Interesting enough, so what we want to do now is come back to our listing loader or our inventory. And we can see here FBA Multi Tool, we've got a lot of different products in now. So I'm great, I've got the name, I've got the category, I've got etc. etc. Now, the one thing which I do know is this is my buy price here and this is the sell price. So, what I want to do is I want to basically take this information. And I now want to basically create automatically a new listings loader import. 
but the different thing I want to do is I want to literally and if I just create a new column up here because obviously we're going to have like asin name oh do you want to get rid of that name if I make this bold to make your life just that little bit easier and then we've got category and if I just do buy price buy sell and then this is that's fine and we've got date so what I'm going to do is under say for example column R I'm going to put in a little should we say upload so I might call it inventory upload there we go now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put 0000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. And the reason why I'm putting 000 is that that's what I'm normally going to have. But what I might do is I might say, look, for this product, this product, this product, this product, not that one. So these four products, I've checked them. Maybe I've checked them for my VA. I've done a review of them. I'm really happy. And they are products that now I've bought that, that maybe I want to upload that's going to be really useful. So what I'm looking to do, I just want to double check that I'm live. Yeah, fantastic. So what I'm looking to do is to say in this, I'm going to use this column, so i.e. column R, as a check to say, actually, is that is that going to be my that you know that's going to be my check to say whenever I put one in that column, it should automatically update in here, and when I don't have it as one, it's going to remove it from here. So I don't even need to worry about typing this. I literally just come to this sheet, I put one in the other column, I come to this sheet, and it's already done. And then I change that one to a zero and I come to the sheet, it's been removed. So it makes my life so much more simple. So first of all, we've got this, which is really nice and easy. We've got, is it one or is it zero? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to here. Now, I've already created these formula, but I will share this with you afterwards. But also the formula I've created now is just so I don't have to really remember them too much. So what I'm going to come in, and if I just go, can I uh, show that? So then I can just kind of do it off the top of my head. So what I'm after here is to say, I'm going to go equals filter. So what I'm looking to do is create a filter from our results. And I'm going to basically filter them by that one and that zero. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to select all of this. And interesting enough, right back to the A. Now, if you've ever watched any of my other webinars, I'd really recommend just learning a little bit about array formulas and how Google Sheets work. Most people select from like here A1 to R7. We want to do A1 to forever. So we get rid of the seven and it will just go forever and ever and ever. Now, what we're looking to do is go filter. Now we want to filter based, based on this column. So I'm just gonna select the whole column. Now, what I wanna do is to say, I want to show me results when this column equals one but what i might say is another way is it doesn't equal zero but the one thing which i do know here is that i don't want this top row i don't want this one so i'm just going to put in here r2 and i'm going to do this a1 and change that to a2 so it's just going to bring it down slightly so it's going to be this row two to forever so a2 to r all the way forever and then also filter by r2 always forever and then i'm going to be happy with that and we've got this information but now what I've done here is I've taken all that information across and I don't want that all I want is just that first column and if I just double check the first column is here so that's fine so what I'm after instead of a2 to r2 I'm just after a2 to a and what that's going to do is because I've got these array formulas up here it will change in a minute is that it's now going to list me any of the ASINs whereby it's zero. And if I just give you an example, so let's come in and I'm just going to hide these quickly just so I can show you how this, this was actually done. So let's go hide. So I've just put them together. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this and put it into a snippet. And then I'll load up this listings report. And what we're looking for is to say wherever it is not a zero, so it's a one, have we brought that ASIN across? So we are looking for all these ones where it's one. I just want to double check. So right here, and if I get my little red pen out. So we've got this one, KPI, that one's come across, so that's tick. This one is KZ, K, KZY, it's KZJ, sorry, tick. This one is 9YI, tick. And this one is VFS, tick, fantastic. And you can see here, the zero and this zero, they've not come across. 
So only the ASINs that we want, whereby they are highlighted one, have been automatically pulled across. That's great. Now, let's just double check, and I want to get rid of this last one, VFS, and let's change VSS to zero, and come back to here, and VFS is now gone. Brilliant. So what does that mean? It means every time we change a, f a result here, inventory upload from zero to one, what does it do? It adds or removes that value right here, which is great, because it means once we've maybe got our VAs to send us all our products, once we're happy, we click we change it to one and then what we do is we just load this up and then we can literally download it and send it so let me just undo these so fantastic right now let's come back to this so the one thing which we're looking for here is to say and what I'm going to do is hide these if I can I delete them delete row uh, no I don't want to delete that row because there's some bits of information that I want in there so can I just change some of these a2 a2 to A, fine. I'm just changing some of these. So, if I come in and just talk through what we've done, you know, I can I? I tell you what I can do. I can do it this way. Ah, insert button. So we've got these products in here, and I get rid of that. We've got these products in here, which are the three ASINs, and let's just make it back to four because we know how to do that now. One. We've got the four ASINs, which is great. Um, and then also what we've got now is uh, what we're looking to do is just to fill out the sheet so it automatically works for us. So product ID is going to be our SKU or our ASIN for example, but we've already got the ASIN here so what we can do is we can copy that information across. So let's go there. But now what we want to say is actually we want the SKU. So we might have another column and call it SKU. So let's call this, like you don't have a SKU here, so let's create a SKU column. We might we might have a formula, so SKU might be something like um, ASIN and I don't know, maybe something like and the buy price. So that's going to be there we go. ASIN and buy price is now going to be our SKU. You can create dynamic SKUs that way, not a problem. And there's a really good trick from Al Carton, which I'll share a link to afterwards, about how to create some really good dynamic SKUs. But you can do that. So right here, we'd say now what we want to do is we want to get this SKU information. So one thing which I would just say is when you're doing this is to say you've got the SKU here. So we want to get the SKU information so we can do equals. And again, we're talking about array formulas. This is quite complex, so you don't have to worry too much. But um, it's a really good tool to learn because it makes your whole, your whole Excel sheets dynamic. So we're going to say array form formula brackets. And then I'm going to say if brackets this, i.e. this column, equals blank, question mark, or speech bubbles, then do nothing. So if it's doing nothing, then do nothing. But if, and then else, if it isn't, and then I want to say vlookup, so I want to look up this value here. Oh, here's where it's going to stop. vlookup brackets, and I want to look up b8. And then I want to look up that value in here. So I'm going to go literally across to, I'm going to come all the way across. And I'm going to select all of these values all the way across to skew. And it has to include the skew. Now remember, when I talk about right now, we're only selecting those seven columns. We want to be selecting them all. So we want to go, if it ever put something in, maybe at row 100, we want to include that. So I'm going to get rid of that seven off the S and that's going to include everything and then what I'm going to say is now what we're looking to is once you found that value which is here A we need to count how many across it is to get the information the SKU so we're going to say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 19 close 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 and the one final thing you do want to do, just with an array formula, is array formulas don't work on one cell. They basically work for every cell, which is fantastic. So instead of having B8 to just B8, we want to change it B8 to B. And again, the reason is we don't do B8 to B100. We do B8 to B because we want it to go forever. And then finally, again, B8 to B here. And once we're done, we click OK. And what that's done now is it's now found that ASIN and then brought us back 
that skew and we're like fantastic so now we've got the skew and now we've got the ASIM so let's continue to build this new listings import so we can automate that process of finding deals or uploading so again we've got product type here which is this always has to be one so we're going to use really simple equals if I delete these I can use that one already but I'll delete that anyway equals array formula brackets if brackets that column b to b remember we're doing it forever equals nothing then do nothing otherwise we want to say equals one we just want to put the value one in there because one shows us that it's an ASIN that we're going to pull up and voila so every time there's a value here it automatically puts one in which is great now we want to do exactly the same thing and we can literally take this array formula and put it in here and this is now gives us a skew but we don't want that we want the price so really simple so while we we counted 19 across from a b c d we're now going to just count instead of 19 we're going to count to get to our sale price so it might be that we want to sell at the current market price so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so we've got 13 there so really simple coming in and just saying over here changing this 19 to 13 and what we do now is it pulls in that buy price or that sell price which is really useful so each of these ASINs it'll go and find the ASIN and then get the sell price let's say for example in my business what I do is I ship everything at twice the sell price the reason is or you might want to ship it at 1.5 you can then put that in and that adjusts their updates and the reason why I do that is because if the market is changing what I really want to do is ship that product in slightly higher than the current market price and then what I'm looking to do is for my repricing software to bring that back down again but if, say for example if I were to ship that at 39 and the current market price is at 45 because the product sold out then that's gonna be a problem I'm losing on you know six pounds worth of profit but if I ship it in a little bit higher and then the moment it goes live my repressing software grabs it and brings it back down again that's going to help my business and you know make me money in the long run which is going to be great so again we got the price here that's fantastic and what I might do is just format that in the right number of columns so we got you know price maximum minimum seller we're not interested in item condition is exactly the same as product type but we're setting that as 11 add or delete and I'm just going to copy this cell by the way Let's put that there and this is got to be cell 8 wait for that to load cool and then again this is exactly the same formula we've had just in this in the 11 whereby it all it's doing is looking say if there's a product in there then add this value in because for us every single time we add a product in we want it to have 11 which means it's new and then a for add so that's brilliant and then again we've got Amazon EU so I'm just going to delete these out and put them into the right place because what I'll do in a minute is update this properly and I'm just going to change that to 8 and then here we've got the batteries so undo that delete delete and I'll just put these in here and these are exactly the same formulas so again I'm going to share this all with you once we're done voila and then finally in here 8 and then final thing is not applicable let's get all of that delete that out and put that in here so that's 8 right so there you go not applicable now so we've got this sheet nice and created and what I'm going to do now is just delete these columns here delete these rows so what we've created here is a really simple inventory listings import sheet from FBA multi-tool or you say any software that you're using and the way we can change it is by quite simply adding in changing these to ones and what you can see here is when they update to one these products now come into here and we've got all these products live okay it's updating as we speak the formula's just run wait for that to update interesting that one's not come through did not find BEM brudum. is that you 
even on it. Okay, interesting. So we'll move that one out. I'll check that one later. But the concept comes here is what we can do is you can really simply add a a product in into our we can literally download it. We can find it on the web. So let's say for example we find one here. We can then add that in with our FBA multi tool, put it onto our inventory loader sheet, and then finally come in using a pre selected zero or one. We can literally add them in or remove them. And then what will happen is that's going to update onto this sheet and then immediately we can go file download tsv really simple come straight to our product listings go to upload inventory file and then choose the type of file so we've got here inventory loader file click choose file and also we're going to get the one we've just done and then we're going to click upload and i can get to send me an email not a problem and then I'm going to go grab a coffee, I'm going to go grab a drink, and then when I maybe check some emails, do some Facebook posts, and then the moment I come back, this product's going to, these products are now going to be in my inventory, ready for me to create a shipment on. Maybe I can click on the right ones I'm after and say, right, let's come in now, you know, create a, create a shipment, uh, replenish, send in replenishment inventory. That's going to be nice and simple for me to just streamline my operations, make adding in new products a lot easier. And for you, whether you're using something like FBA Multitool or like SAS, even if you're doing RA, you can add them to your sheet as you go. And then once you get home, you can literally dynamically, very quickly create an upload sheet and add immediately all your RA purchases that you've just done for that day and put them into one nice sheet and then straight away upload that to Amazon and say done, not a problem. And that's going to save you so much time, especially if you're doing lots of random products, like when you're doing RA scanning, that's going to make a big difference. And I think certainly with mobile apps like SaaS, you can do your RA scanning and then send it to an Excel spreadsheet and then that you can use that spreadsheet and start adding, creating listing loading templates and upload that straight into Amazon using this technique, which is going to be really helpful to streamlining your business. So that's a little bit about, and if I just kind of recap, number one is the inventory list, inventory loader, how to get it, where to get it from. If I go big. So that's how to get the inventory loader, looking at the inventory loader. And then number two, we looked at getting something like FBA Multitool, we could use SAS or, or any similar kind of product. And then saving the searches that you've done, whether it might be a list that you've created, whether it be from RA sourcing in store, or it might be online sourcing that your VA's done or even you've done. And then once you've done that, is adding in a few extra columns at the end, a SKU that dynamically create, and then also add to inventory loader. And then using that and also some array formulas, you can create a dynamic uh, inventory file, which you literally just need to add the ones and zeros in next to, or just change it to one. And what's gonna happen is that will then automatically create your inventory file for you without, you know, literally within a second. You can download that and then upload that to Amazon and then grab a coffee. And within five, 10 minutes after that, those products are going to be live on your seller central and you don't need to manually go through and add each one at a time going through the hazmat regulations which is just a pain so this especially if you're doing massive amounts of very varying products and adding a lot of products in on a regular basis this is going to help speed up your process so hopefully you found that really useful and it's been really informative for you um, what i'm going to do now is just go to any questions that we've got um, and have a look through the the facebook group and obviously, like I said beforehand, uh, what I will do is I will share this link to you to have a look at, to see, and obviously for you is to have a, uh, a play with. So one thing which I will just do is, if I just say it to people, because some people don't get this too well, but I'll just do it now. It's all small again. When you come into the inventory listing loader template, obviously I'm going to share it with you. But the first thing you need to do is come up to here and do make a copy. If you try and edit the copy that I'm sharing with you, it won't happen because I've locked it so that you can only view it. You can't edit it. But what you can do is make a copy and then the copy on your drive, you will be able to edit. You will be able to make changes to and obviously play with, see the formula and hack it and make it work for your business. So just remember, come in, go to file, make a copy. And once you've done that, then you can use the inventory loading template. 
So let me just now go back to the, the Facebook group and answer any questions. So we've got here just a quick question, quick point. I'll just let it reload. Right, so we've got, okay, so yes, the template will be available to download. And obviously, that's what I'm going to do now. And um, obviously, thank you. I've got here, thank you very much for sharing. And honestly, really happy to, like I said before, I'm I'm not an expert. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know all the answers. I don't, but I've certainly scaled to six figures pretty rapidly, and I've seen a lot of these problems. And I'm very, should we say, lazy in the fact that I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. I want to make things fast and efficient. Hence, why I'm doing a lot of these webinars is about, should we say, systematizing, improving your processes, and just making your businesses faster and more efficient, so that you can spend the time and hey, same as me, spend the time doing what adds value. You know, adding, uploading stuff to Amazon one by one is a waste of your time. Spending time sourcing, that's where you add value. So hopefully this is going to speed you up, make your life faster, and make your process more efficient. And I think especially if you're using something like SaaS and you're doing RA, this is going to be a real benefit for you because it allows you just to get from the moment you finished your scans straight home, put it onto your shared spreadsheet, create that inventory file, get it uploaded really quick, and then immediately from that, you can then start uploading all the information. So what I will say is, I think I've gone through everything now, um, but for me, Thomas Parkinson, thank you very much. And what I will say is, if you like this and you like this content, be sure to give me a big like, I really like that. Um, also, just drop down the comment down here, say like, I like it, or any questions, let me know. And the reason is, just have that feedback is really useful. Obviously, I don't hear everything going on, but if you let me know, that's really beneficial. And hopefully, you found this really informative and really useful. And if there's anything else you want me to do, be sure to drop the button down, drop it down in the comments below. But also as well, if you're watching on YouTube, and I will replay this on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. That's really useful. And any other content we release, you're going to see as well. Um, but for me, Thomas Parkinson, a fast track FBA sourcing, thank you very much. And thank you very much for spending your time watching this live with me. Thank you.